Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ba'd. Then, uh, I'm your brother, Brother Umar Mitchell. And I'm streaming to you guys here live from Masjid Umar. It is the masjid here on uh, Colfax, close to Colfax and Airport Boulevard in Aurora, Colorado. And I just wanted to address you all uh, because a lot of people reached out to me and a lot of people have been asking questions. What's happening with our youth? To give you guys some background, in the first place, because we have to have a proper background uh, about what perspective that I'm speaking from, then I have been in this masjid, or in this community rather, in the state of Colorado, in service to the youth of this community here in the Denver metro area for more than 10 years. Me, myself, I'm a convert. Alhamdulillah, aslamtu. I converted or reverted. I don't like either of those words. I like to use the word that the companions would use in the sunnah, which is aslama. I submitted. I submitted uh, to Islam after having lived a life you know, as a young adult outside of Islam. I was not born into a family of Muslims. Alhamdulillah, my father, he's accepted Islam. And I'm so thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Uh, but I, uh, I grew up in this city, and I grew up as a youth in the city, as what you would consider maybe a troubled youth. And when I came to Islam, and I submitted fully to Islam, and I strive to, even to this day, and continue, inshallah, to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the things that I felt that I can serve the religion with is by serving the youth. And so I began under Imam Kareem Abu Zaid and Mashid Abu Bakr in a time when there was literally no youth programs when the Imam came. And I started working with him there and he, we developed a program for the youth with the little, you know, the little bit that we can do. Yani, at that time, and this is a part of what I think is a problem. You know, there was, there was no organized youth activity in that masjid, and there was not very much going on in the, in the entire city. I don't want to say nothing was happening, but there was a lot of gaps in, in our efforts. Nothing was really united. There was nothing streamlined, and uh, there just needs to be a presence of something inside the community at that time. So at that time, I decided to uh, start a youth program at the masjid and just sit and talk with the youth on Fridays for, you know, about an hour. And that's, that's really all the time that we had. And, you know, first and foremost, you ask yourself, if you're exposing yourself to disbelief for 24 hours out of a day, so or maybe not 24 hours, let's be fair, but for the majority of the day, the children wake up in the morning and, you know, either they pray or they don't pray. Then they go to school all day. And if they don't go to an Islamic school, then, Yanni, they're going to a school of disbelievers. And they're being influenced by the environment. They're hearing things, they're seeing things, and their environment is dictating things for them is telling them what is not just acceptable, but what is desirable. You know, what do you want to be? And so they're exposed to this environment and then they get home. But when they get home, maybe the parents are home or maybe they're not because they have to work. And then they're exposed to television, phones, computers. They have to do homework. They have all these other things, responsibilities. They have very little time to even worship Allah and then they have to go, you know? So that one hour at that time, 
I really feel was insufficient. And it was what I could do as I was a father myself. It was what I could do. And so I was there in Masjid Abu Bakr for about the period of 10 years. And that's why I stated that when I went to this janazah yesterday for our brother, may Allah have mercy on him, I saw faces of the youth that I had seen, that I've known them for over half of their life, some of them, and some of them for half of their life were just a little bit under. And, you know, it was a good feeling, honestly. And, and I want to say that to the youth that may see this, Yanni, I was so happy to see you. You know, I was so happy to see you, even though it was under the circumstances that it was. And I'm not saying that you guys don't go to the masjid. Because I know that many of you guys do go to the masjid. I just didn't see you because I'm over here on the side of the city and, and however it is. But I haven't seen many of you guys, you know. And you guys are men now. And when I, you know, saw you last, or over, when I remember seeing you guys long time for all these years, you guys have always been, you know, I see your faces the same. And it's, and it's hard to even see that, you know, these guys are men now, you know, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless them and preserve them. And for the sisters, because the sisters were a part of the youth group as well. You know, even though I didn't see many of you, uh, you know, you guys were also, many of you were also at the funeral, at the janazah, the burial. And, you know, so that's the background to give you a background of the time that I spent inside of the masjid and my background of my life growing up and what I can contribute uh, from my experiences. And so, you know, I remember being at a crossroads when I was a youth and my father and my mother didn't, you know, give up on me. But that's a big part of the thing that's missing is the level of accountability. I had to answer to my father and I had to answer to my mother and they governed the house and they governed my life with uh, authority. I was allowed to do certain things and I was not allowed to do certain things. And when things got really crazy, they did not give up. They actually escalated the amount of assistance and they, they reached out for resources. And because of the type of life that I was living, they even reached out to the police, not to uh, report me, but the police had actually contacted them. And they just wanted to know, you know, what am I doing? Where am I going? You know, what kind of things are happening? And then, you know, I would be places and my dad would pop up. And I'm like, how did my dad know that I'm here? You know? And my dad was, he's, he's, no, he's no joke. So, you know, he grabbed me up and, you know, would advise me. My father's not a violent man. My mother's not a violent person. They actually reasoned with me and spoke to me. And they allowed me to talk even when, you know, I was making a lot of nonsense, but they allowed me to talk. And that really helped a lot because then they, they would let me say what I had to say. I would see that they are respecting my, my thought. And then they would, yani, they would give me their perspective and they would help me understand what it is that they're, uh, what they want me to understand. So a big part of what's missing in our community is that kind of connection between the youth and their parents. There's also a very big connection, disconnection between the leadership of the community and their parents. And there is a bigger disconnect between the leadership of the community and the youth. These are very big gaps. And if you ask any of the youth, they will let you know. Some of the Imams, they can count on two hands how many times they had a program and the Imam was there. It doesn't mean that the Imam is not trying to be available to them, but this is just the reality of what a lot of the youth have said to me over the years. And I always tried to be there with the youth 
and I always try to be there in the service of them. Uh, so that's a big thing. There's a, a lot of miscommunication and there are a lot of gaps. And these gaps are where opportunity slips. And this is where we fall into these kind of tragic problems. Another thing is that we're not talking about the problems that are actually happening. You know, it's not very feasible and easy to believe that just one day the youth woke up and decided to use hardcore drugs. It, they didn't just decide to start using narcotics. They started with other things. They started at smaller steps, some things that the parents are aware of, and, and they, they swept them under the rug, and they did not talk about them, and they didn't address it, and they did not warn the other families that this is my son, and my son is doing this, and, and I don't know if your son is doing that and what's going on. And the youth themselves also have this culture of not talking about things. You know, like the things you do as a parent, they are gonna be things that your children do. If you tell what you call innocent lies, you know, when people call on the phone even and say, hey, is your mom or dad home? And you tell your, your kid, tell them, hey, I'm not home. I'm not home, I'm not home. You know, this is a lie. You know, you're teaching your children to lie if you do that. You know, you're teaching your children to lie if you do that. Everything you do, you're influencing your children to have the same type of behavior and they're gonna adopt it. So if you are sweeping things under the rug and you're not talking about things, your children are not gonna talk about things. And if you are unreasonable with them or you are violent with them, automatically whenever they come to talk to you about things or you discover things, they're not going to talk to you. You know, why would they do that? You know, if I know that I'm gonna get hit, you know, and beat just for opening my mouth and saying a single thing, I'm not gonna say anything. I know it's hard as a parent to have restraint, but you have to, you have to exercise patience and you have to try your best to let your children talk. You know, especially if you don't understand this environment, you really need to take time to do that. So I think that is a biz, big disconnect between the parents. There's also a big disconnect between the community leaders and the masajid and the youth themselves. At this point, many times they're just trying to, they're just trying to make it. You know, they're just trying to get through their life and, and, you know, they have a lot of difficulties that they're facing right now. Let alone, many of you can't say what it's like, even I cannot tell you what it's like, to be a Muslim youth inside of this area, inside of this city, and grow up in a, in a school where everybody's not Muslim, people are, you know, using drugs, people are, you know, hooking up and, and having boyfriends and girlfriends. They're doing all these things, the girls are not wearing hijab, they're dressing in however they want to, they're going to prom and dances and everything else. And, and they're having to hold on to what? To a, you know, if you're giving them one hour lecture per week, then what do you think is gonna be the result of that? The fact that these kids are actually praying and maintaining their Islam to the level that they are, I'm very proud of them. And I, I can't tell you how much of a challenge that I can imagine having me been a part of the problem when I was growing up to know exactly what that means, to have that kind of pressure on other people. And so may Allah reward them and bless them. And we, we can't blame the youth. I think that the, the people that need to be held accountable more than anybody is the leadership in the community and the parents inside of the home. If the parents have a system of accountability, and nowadays with the cell phone, you can literally track your child and know exactly where they're at. So why don't you try to go to where they are and ask them what they're doing, pop up on them. You know, I pop up on my sons, I pop up on my children. I'm not afraid to go, I didn't let them go to a house that I don't know the parents and I have a discussion with them. And honestly, if the parents don't share the same values as me, I do not encourage my children to go there. It's not because I have any kind of hatred, but it's because I have an agenda and I have a mission. And my mission is for my children to grow up as Muslims, first and foremost. That's first and foremost. And then for them to be educated properly in the deen and in the dunya and know how to navigate and function the side of this life. You know, I don't really emphasize what kind of job they have to have. 
I do want them to have good grades and I do follow up with them. And, and you know, me and my wife are very diligent about that. But first and foremost, we have to have the dean. And that goes to now when you say you're, op you're offering education for the children and the religion, if you think that the children learning uh, the Quran without understanding the meanings and celebrating that they finished this book that they don't understand is the, is the solution by itself, then I'm telling you, you're making a big mistake. You know, the children have to understand what it is that they're doing. They need to understand what is the meaning of the book of Allah. And so you have to sit down with them and you have to connect them to the book of Allah and connect them to the Salah and connect them to, and let them see the benefit and, and play out scenarios in real life and show them how Islam is truly an entire life system and it is the way to success. You have to do these things for your youth. You have to take the time to do this and this is not the job of the masjid because the masjid can only function so often. And if you can't afford to take your children to school, Islamic schools, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid you and make it easy for you. I know this is a big challenge for a lot of people, but you have, you've got to make it where they have contact with Islam and learn something every day, every day. And yes, it is a challenge for them. And you will see them being challenged by this and you will be challenged by this and you will be tired some days but you have to make sure that they are doing something to learn about the religion of Allah every day and being in that environment. And we as a community, we can't just blame the leadership. The other things that we are not doing as a community that's contributing to this problem is we're not giving viable solutions and supporting Muslim uh, businesses and enterprises and, and uh, functions that serve the community, for example. You can't just say that the Muslim community is going to be a masjid, a school, and a house. The kids got to go eat sometimes. Where are they going to eat? If they're eating the same food in the house that they're eating inside of the restaurant, do you think that they want to go to that restaurant? No, they're going to want to go to the other place. Now, what if the other place is serving alcohol, and then there's a lot of things going on there, and there's a lot of mixing going on there, and the environment is not Islamic? Then what do you expect to be the case for the youth then? What is their option? You know, if they want to go to the gym, you can't tell the kids, oh, go to 24 hour fitness at two o'clock in the morning because that's when there's no women at the gym. Trust me, there are women at the gym at two o'clock in the morning. And your children are going to go there. And your daughters, you want them to stay in the house and not do anything and not have any way for them to, you know, exercise or, or anything like that and socialize and interact together. You know, we have to create an environment that is covering all the bases. And we can't criticize people while they're trying to do so if we're not doing anything. You know, we need to support those things. Uh, one thing that I'm, I'm very supportive of is the Islamic schools that are here and the madrasas that are here. But now we gotta actually communicate and we gotta come up with some other solutions to close up some of these gaps. That's just some of the thoughts that I've had about what's going on now. There's so many other things that I have to say, but I don't want to rant. Uh, anything that I said is correct is from Allah and His Messenger. Anything I said is not correct is from myself or Shaitan. And Allah and His Messenger are free from it. I hope that you guys found some benefit in what it is that I advise you with. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, if you would like to come on Saturdays for learning fiqh of the family. This is everyday fiqh for the entire family. We're doing this here at Masjid Umar. Uh, I've now been appointed as the Imam of the Masjid here. And uh, this is where I will be serving the community for the time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me thabat and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the ability and success. Alhumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.